Over the years, there have been cases of sexual assault, especially violence against both women and men, violence against children, domestic violence, child abuse, and rape, which is the focus of this week's edition of Core Health. And our guest for today is the Chief Executive Officer of Heartminders Initiative, Funke Ogutuga, who is passionate about women and girls, and who is also an advocate for rape victims. Hello and welcome. My name is Ibiru Nke, I read Lovigby. All right, thank you very much, ma'am. Um, your organization is more on rape victims. Yes. I'm an advocate for rape victims. Over the years, we've had uh, cases of sexual assault, especially violence against women, men, children, especially yes. domestic violence and all sorts of violence. And um, recently, you organized a sensitization work against trade. So, what prompted that sensitization work? Um, our sensitization work has been in existence for five years now. And um, the main reason why we started the campaign against rape and sexual abuse that gave birth to the sensitization work is so that a lot of people will know more what they should and they shouldn't do, what to do in case it happens, what to do to... Because we can't say because rape is in, in entirety the fault of the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. That does not say we cannot prepare ourselves. So one of the reasons why we are sensitizing the general public is to prepare them for eventualities so that they know that in the society that we are, rape exists and what can or can, can't be done to you know, reduce it to the barest minimum. Because when you look at issues of rape, it is usually a case of repeated offenders. Repeated offenders in the sense that because we have been quiet for a long time, a lot of people don't actually speak up about rape. People prefer to protect the identity of the victim. In doing so, they end up protecting the perpetrator, which makes the person go at large. So when, when you hear about a rape case in a particular area, if you trace the history, it is usually a case of repeated offenders, someone who has you know, raped someone and escaped the punishment and then will go ahead and do it to another person. So part of the campaign of breaking the silence against rape and sexual abuse is to encourage victims to speak up so as to make sure that we don't have one person committing this offense on a sister, going to another sister, going to the friend, going to a mother, and thereby making um, like five to six people victim of one person. Okay. Um, the issue of rape in Nigeria today has become an everyday crime. Yes. And Nigerians have continued to raise eyebrow over the crime and why it is on the increase. Mm -hmm. As an advocate, what do you think are the likely causes of this uh, crime? The first cause of, of um, everyday that, that we are hearing about it every day is the culture of silence. The culture of silence. Like I said earlier, when when something is is bad, let's call it as it is, is bad. If if I put something down, someone steals it. In from Yoruba, I'm, from, I'm a Yoruba woman, and in Yoruba we say, "O leloma sokwe ibiti oni konfisi oda," meaning that. It is a thief that would say, why did you put your thing here? Why did you leave it in the open? Do you understand? So it is a case of culture of silence. We have kept quiet for too long. Because we have kept quiet for too long, it has now become a case where we now suddenly know, oh, what we're doing was wrong. So everybody wants to speak up now. That is why you are hearing about it time and again now. Then we need to we need to start sex education at the early stage. We have spoken to the government of Lagos State, and I'm glad that Lagos State government is at the forefront 
in the fight against rape and sexual abuse. We need to include sex education in our curriculum. We need to start teaching sex education as early as the baby understands words. As early as, there's no age to it. A lot of people will say, at what age can I start teaching sex education? You can have a child that cannot assimilate as, as at the age of six or seven. You cannot teach a child that is not so smart and doesn't understand what you're saying. So you have to start as soon as you understand your child can understand words like body parts. This is, this, is, this is my chest, this is my hand, this is my body, this is the ones that are private, these are the ones that are not private. This is where you can see, this is your uncle, this is your aunt. As soon as you know that the child can assimilate such information, you start teaching sex education. Um, thank you very much, Ma. What do you think can be done now to address this uh, menace from both government level and from relevant um, bodies, just like your own organization? Okay, for the government, um, governments need to be involved more in the fight against rape and sexual abuse, just like Lagos State. I will always use Lagos State as an example because. The, recently, we attended a conference organized by the First Lady, Mrs. Um, Aisha Mohamed Buhari. And what, all the things that she was saying, she was using Lagos as an example. So if federal government can use Lagos as an example, mm -hmm. we cannot stop talking about the special sexual violence courts that Lagos government just opened, where we have the fastest case of rape that got a conviction in the history of West Africa. In less than three months, a case was reported. The arrest was made, um, hearings took place, and there was a conviction of 60 years imprisonment. This is what I'm talking about. It is not easy for an NGO like Artminders, like we have restrictions. For instance, if anyone calls Artminders to report a case of rape, mm -hmm. my duty or the duty of any of our officers on ground is to receive the complaints and take necessary contact. And then we go to the Lagos State Domestic Violence and Response Team, or Mirabel, or Warif, or call the nearest police station. Then we make a complaint. And then we now get a letter to make arrest. We can't make arrest. We have to get our arrest or the police to follow us and make arrest. When we make arrest, we pay to get our file taken to a court. We pay. I'm saying it on national TV. We will pay. And then they will take our case there. And then they will now start looking for lawyer. And then we will start begging um, the victim to come and talk. We start begging the mother to come and do witness. Start begging police to bring the file. Bring this, bring that. But when a state is involved, you can imagine if Lagos State stands up to arrest you. You know you are in for trouble now. So we got, we, we are getting faster judge, uh, faster justice we are getting we are seeing a case where police now stands up to responsibilities so government can be involved to make it easier for victims when governments are involved and a victim knows that for instance in lagos the person that is standing up for me is governor kimiambody you can be sure that the victim will be a little bit relaxed the person will have more confidence in the system I'm not saying they don't have confidence in NGOs. As a matter of fact, part of Lagos State Domestic Violence and Response Team are NGOs like Mirabel, like um, Warif, like um, Stand to End Rape and the rest. We need to, government needs to stand up to responsibility. As a matter of fact, the, the part of the things that the government owes us as citizens is to protect us. The um, issue of rape and sexual abuse is it's, um, it's, 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 what is, it's what is done against a citizen, a citizen that has the right to be protected. So if government stand up, if every other state can join Lagos and have special courts and have their own body and have, uh, you know, uh, maybe small, small, um, like a, a road court, like we have all these um, small, small courts that can try and make arrests. It will make the job easier. Well, at this junction, we will take a quick break. Please do stay with us.
if you are not idle, nobody will probably come and encourage you to join their gang or the group. Yes. To keep Nigeria one, you see more that must be done. Nigeria is not going to break. So if I don't buy this one now, how much will you sell this one? I will free give you 500. Sure? This one? Yes. This small banana? Yes. I know that Buhari can do it. He has a lot of plans. We should be praying for him. He's a human being. Anything can happen to, any, to anybody. The majority of the law they pass is belong to them, to favor them, not the masses in Nigeria. If we want to change, let's change generally. Don't let change up. Let's change generally. The people giving voice to the voiceless. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, you're watching Core Health. And our focus for this week's episode is sexual assault with focus on rape. And we have been talking with the Chief Executive Officer of Heart Minders Initiative, Funke Ogutuga. Let's hear more from her. Okay, um, let's look at the issue of that 13 year old girl we talked about. If we want to categorize that, it falls under uh, pedo powers. You can call them pedo powers, but she's underage. Am I right? Yes. Pedophiles, are, pedophiles has nothing to do about the victim. Pedophile is about the perpetrator. Pedophiles is a mental disorder. It is a mental disorder. And it is the sickness of the perpetrator. It has nothing to do with the victim. Pedophiles are naturally, they are attracted to younger sex. So you see a 60-year-old man who is sexually attracted to a two-month-old girl, a three-month-old girl, a for 10, 11, nine, girls that does not even have boobs, that are not attractive, that you cannot even, they cannot dress up, and you say that you have any sense of attraction. They don't have. The only thing is they are opposite sex, and they are attracted to them. So, pedophile is a case of a mental disorder of someone who is not okay. Because I don't think they are okay. They are not. They are not. So what we advise for pedophiles is to get help, seek mental health help. Thank you very much, ma. Looking at the laws we have in place for rapists, do you think we need better laws to address the issue of rapists? No, we have law, and our laws are okay. What we need are people who we need people who handles the law to do better than they are doing. We need the judiciary to stop throwing our files away. We need the police to stop telling our young girls to go and settle it at home. We need government to be involved and make sure that no rape case is in the courts more than six months. That's what we need. We already have the law. All right. Okay, aside um, these laws and other government initiatives, what more can the society do? What, what can we do as a society? As a society, it's, it's, it's either you are there when it happens or you heard about it. So if you, if you hear about it, if you are there when it happens, it makes you a bystander. We call them bystanders. Mm -hmm. If you are a bystander, the least you can do is to make a report. If you are there when it happens. So we have a term now for that. If you see something, see something. If you see it happen, you don't need to... You can claim anonymous. Just call 112 if you are in Lagos. Call 112. If you are outside Lagos, call any number of any NGO. At Minders, we have a number. We pick calls from any state in Nigeria. We will refer it. Do you have your numbers? Yes, we have our numbers. So we need, we need as citizens, as individuals, to be our brother's keepers, to make a report. When you see it happen, say it as a bystander. Well, at this junction, we will take a quick break. Please do stay with us. Over 2,000 communities in Nigeria, each with its unique story. Some real of comfort, most with its complaints. Whatever the story is from your community, we tell it. Let's journey together through streets, homes, markets, every nook and cranny to tell your story the right and the true way. Community Focus, it's all about you and your community. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching Core Health, and we've been looking at rape issues in Nigeria. 
brought about um, of the issue of provocating here. Yes. I said it's not about what street the, the victim was. So the people are saying that provocating person is to blame for the increase in rape cases. I'm just saying it's not. People rape Ajias with hijab. In Iran, and I keep wondering what is the attraction. In, you see, you know the way Indians, you know the way they dress. Yes. They have the highest rate of rape case in the world. It's not about what you're wearing. Okay, what is a two year old wearing? Hmm. What is a three month old girl wearing? So let, let's use our sixth sense. It's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's not about what she's wearing, yeah. it's not about what she drank. Okay, it's it's not, there's no excuse for rape. There's no excuse. There's no excuse for rape, and I'm saying it in capital letters. There is no excuse for rape and any form of sexual violence. When you, when, when you say that, what, when a father says, because of what my daughter wears, is why I rape her, then we need to question our humanity. We need to ask ourselves if, if what I wear is what makes is what makes him rape her. Okay. Then we see a lot of men go about in boxers. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't have as much. There are cases of rape, yeah. men who are raped, but their ego will not let them speak up. And when you don't speak up, you don't get help. That's for men. It's as simple as that. They don't talk. They feel their ego has been bruised. And when your ego has been bruised, you don't want to talk. And when you don't want to talk, nobody hears. And when nobody hears, you don't get help. When you speak up, that's when you get help. We have young boys that we are helping now that men are like, men and women are like, have destroyed by using them as sex objects. So we need to speak up. That's by the side. We need to change our orientation and stop the rape culture. We need to understand that what a lady wears is not a criteria for rape. Rape is rape. Rape is rape. It is an offense against humanity. It is an offense against God. But I've heard um, some men say what a woman wears can easily attract them, can easily make them you know, have an urge. And then ask her out now. Toast her. Make advances. If you like her because of what she's wearing, make advances. Is that you get a yes or you get a no? Make advances. See, rape is a deliberate act. It is a conscious movement of the perpetrator, like that girl. You understand? It is conscious. The person makes preparation. It doesn't just happen. Somebody is not just going on the road. I'm going on the road and I say, I want to rape. It is a deliberate, conscious effort that somebody makes to hurt somebody else. So it takes a lot of, it takes preparation. You even see some rapists recently about two i'm talking about a two day like a two day hold case mm -hmm. a concert in enugu flavor a popular musician flavor mm -hmm. organized a concert in enugu mm -hmm. and men came with condom to gang rape girls wow. they came with condom they were prepared it looks to me like an arranged, arranged rape, rape. So we can have arranged rape. there's arranged rape yes We've seen boys that ganged up together, broke into somebody's house because they want to rape the 13-year-old girl whom they claim does not greet them. Wow. 13-year-old. And five of them gang raped a 13-year-old girl. Arranged. Arranged. Men, men, take, men take effort into coming to parties with sedatives. To sedate a young girl so that they can have their way. Arranged, planned, conscious. They make efforts to do it. You will see people who would say, I have been watching her. That means you've been taking your time out of the time you're supposed to commit into being a better person. You're taking your time. You're planning to rape. So it doesn't just happen. Only few cases you see of people that is not known to the victim. Mm -hmm. Many of the cases, 80% of rape cases is, it is, 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 is melted out on victim by people they know. Mm -hmm. People that they know who, are, who planned to do it.
So immediately after a rape, what steps should be taken? Don't tamper with the evidence. Under 72 hours, they can still take semen. If it's, if it's a case of defilement, if it's a child, then the defilement, the blood, the, 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 the sperm, and the, that, those are the evidences. If it's a case of an adult, mm -hmm. you can be sure that that one is, 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 is either the, the person gets up immediately, try to clean herself up. No. So there's no evidence. no evidence. And then because she's probably not a virgin, then we can't say there's a defilement. So, but of course, for every case of rape, because it is by force, there is a forceful penetration, so there must be bruises. So if you submit yourself for test under 72 hours, we have laboratories in Lagos, both private and public, Lagos owned, that can get evidence to prove that there is a false penetration. We have cases where they can still get little semen of the person, and then they match. Yes, and then they do matching and then we get evidences. So don't tamper with the evidence, that's the first thing. The second step is to call the police. Rape is a conscious process of intimidation, wherein perpetrators keep women and children, especially in a state of constant fear. It is a crime which stigmatizes the emotions, a crime of insults, oppression that needs to be punished. According to experts, a rapist is a criminal and should not go unpunished. Rape and other forms of sexual harassment need the urgent and serious attention of family, institutions, civil society groups, government, and the international community if we really want to ensure a violence-free society for all. Well, this is how far we can go today on Core Health. Please do feel free to send us your contributions and comments on the numbers display on your screen. My name is Ibiru Nke, Irene Luvigbe. Many thanks for watching.